Will you lay flat? Yeah, look at your feet like that. Ah, excuse me. Can I interview you for my YouTube? What? Can I interview you for my YouTube channel? Oh, Take pictures of your feet? No, I'm, I'm shy for the social media. It's what just are you a, doing? I'm a model scout. I take like foot photography. Oh, okay. Yeah, so I just want to ask you questions about your feet, how you maintain your feet and things my like feet? that. My feet? Yeah. How do you maintain them? <laughs> you know. <laughs> um, okay. Yeah, real quick. Okay. Real quick, yeah. Thank you, I appreciate it. Because only because I'm into uh, foot health. Really? Well, I mean, I think. Wait, wait. I hold that thought. Let me record it. <laughs> so you say you're into foot health? Yeah, because the, your feet are your foundation. Uh huh. So if your feet are in alignment, then the rest of your body will be in alignment. Okay. So I'm just like always. Do you think you have pretty feet? Uh-huh. No? Why not? <laughs> uh, because, well, I grew up ice skating, so my foot was always in boots. Uh-huh. And so I think that's why I have such a big toe. Like, uh -huh. it's just because of the way that my feet are shaped. Uh-huh. Like, it's not because of the way that my body is shaped. Shave the bone. I didn't know that. Yes. So I'm like, well, if I'm not in super pain and I can walk, I can deal with it. Yeah. You know, just wear more comfortable shoes. Okay. Maybe I'm not going to be wearing my stilettos every day. I see. <laughs> so do you go to nail salons or do you do it yourself? Uh, your toes and everything? Sometimes, I mean, obviously right now it's tough, so I've just been doing my own. Okay. How did you feel when I came and approached you and asked you to <laughs> do this? Yeah. So it's weird and, yeah. Why is that weird? <laughs> um, I don't know. I'm not sure. There's some, there's some gnarly looking feet out there. What do you mean by gnarly? Like, like. Oh, you mean like ugly? Like, yeah, like dis disfigured, like, you know. Okay. Feet. We're talking about pretty feet. There are a lot of people that are attracted to pretty feet. How do you feel about that? I mean, they're all individual and it's pretty, mm -hmm. you know, so. I okay. Think, I think you should take care of your feet, for sure. Okay. So you felt shy when I approached you. Um, was there something about me that made you feel shy or the subject matter? Uh, the subject. The subject matter? <laughs> okay. Do you have any suggestions of how I can better approach people to get them to do this well, kind of work? I think Mm -hmm. You're a friendly face. So okay. Alright, I appreciate like your style. You like my style. You know. And it was friendly, it wasn't like crazy. So. Okay. Thank you, I appreciate that. <laughs> you mind if I get some close up photos of your feet? Okay. So, when I was in college, I was in a dance performance and um, my photo was on the flyer. So, I was wanted people to go, so I put it up at my work. And um, in the picture, I'm like doing this maneuver and jumping in the air pointing my feet mm -hmm. and somebody at my work like circled the bunion on the flyer and put an arrow like ha ha laughing at it. Really? Yeah, of course it made me, um, you know, 
self-conscious about my feet, mm -hmm. obviously. So, you know, then you get embarrassed, like, certain shoes you don't want to wear that, like, make it prominent or something. So that's a tra traumatic experience. How do you get over, how do you recommend getting over something like that? I mean, you just completely have to have that confidence in yourself to not care what people think. Mm -hmm. But it's always still there. The yeah. Your mind. Yeah. What about activities like this? Well, I'm celebrating really your feet right now. How does it make you feel? Does it make you feel better about yourself? Does it make you feel better about your feet? Um, yeah, it's like people, other people probably don't see what you see. Oh, a lot of people do. <laughs> a lot of people do. I have like 28,000 followers oh. on my Instagram. All guys who love women's feet. Those pretty feet. Oh, okay. So, okay. yeah. Cool. You'll get more positive responses than negative responses. Oh, okay. <laughs> cool. So how does that make you feel? It makes me feel good. It's like, you know, I want to go home and do a pedicure right now because the like, curious people are looking at your feet. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay. Well, I'm glad to hear that. What makes it hard to regulate emotions? The first thing is biology. This is where the brain and the nervous system changes. In chapter one, Embrace the Struggle, I went over the biological effects of certain emotions. So let's review them here. When a person experiences sadness, biologically they may feel tired, run down, or low energy. They may feel lethargic, feel as though nothing is pleasurable anymore, feel empty, or feel breathless. When a person experiences fear, biologically they may feel nausea, their heart beating fast, muscles tensing, teeth clenching. When a person experiences shame, biologically they may feel a sense of dread, wanting to hide yourself. Those were the three emotions we dealt with in chapter one. Now we'll add some more emotions. When a person experiences anger, biologically they may feel their muscles tightening, teeth clamping together, hands clenching, feeling your face flush or get hot, feeling like you are going to explode, being unable to stop tears, wanting to hit someone, bang the wall, throw something, blow up, wanting to hurt someone. When a person experiences disgust, biologically they may feel nausea, a sick feeling, urge to vomit, vomiting, gagging, choking, having a lump in your throat, aversion to drinking or eating, intense urge to destroy or get rid of something, urge to take a shower, urge to run away or push away, feeling contaminated, dirty, unclean, feeling mentally polluted, fainting. When a person experiences jealousy, biologically they may feel your partner does not care for you anymore. You are nothing to your partner. Your partner is going to leave you. Your partner is behaving inappropriately. You don't measure up to your peers. You deserve more than what you are receiving. You were cheated. No one cares about you. Your rival is possessive and competitive. Your rival is insecure. Your rival is envious. When a person experiences envy, biologically they may feel muscles tightening, teeth clamping together, mouth tightening, feeling your face flush or get hot, feeling rigidity in your body, pain in the pit of your stomach, having an urge to get even, hating the other person, wanting to hurt the people you envy, wanting the person or people you envy to lose what they have, to have bad luck or to be hurt. Feeling pleasure when others experience failure or lose what they have. 
feeling unhappy if another person experiences some good luck, feeling motivated to improve yourself. When a person feels guilt, biologically they may experience a hot red face, jitteriness, nervousness, suffocating. So all these biological factors can make it hard for someone to regulate their emotion. The second thing that makes it hard for someone to regulate their emotion is lack of skill. This is where you don't know what to do to regulate your emotions. So basically, this is a person who has never been taught how to regulate their emotions. This is a skill that can be learned from a therapist or psychologist, someone who is a mental health professional trained to help others to regulate their emotions. The third thing is reinforcement of emotional behavior. This is where your environment reinforces you when you are highly emotional. So an example of this may be when a person is around dysfunctional people who are a trigger and enabler of such person being highly emotional in a non-constructive way, being in a situation where there is constant conflict or competition. The fourth thing is moodiness. This is where your current mood controls what you do instead of your wise mind. So essentially, this is when your mood is causing you to do something non-constructive rather than your wise mind causing you to do something that is constructive. You don't really want to put in the time and effort to regulate your emotions, and this is an issue due to laziness. The fifth thing is emotional overload. This is where a high emotional arousal causes you to reach a skills breakdown point. You can't follow skills, instructions, or figure out what to do. And the last thing is emotion myths. This is where myths about emotions get in the way of your ability to regulate emotions. Myths that emotions are bad or weak, leading to the avoidance of emotions. Myths that extreme emotions are necessary or part of who you are keep you from trying to regulate your emotions. So what I remind myself here is that emotions are good and necessary when they motivate me to do something that is constructive. If an emotion is motivating me to do something that is non-constructive, that is when I would consider that emotion bad, weak, or unnecessary. To summarize, the things that make it hard to regulate emotions include biology, where the brain and nervous system change in a way that make you experience emotions that lead to non-constructive results. Secondly, the lack of skill, where you don't have the knowledge of how to regulate your emotions. Third, the reinforcement of emotional behavior, where a person's environment reinforces him when he is highly emotional. Fourth, Moodiness, where a person's current mood controls what they do instead of their wise mind. Fifth, emotional overload, where high emotional arousal causes a person to reach a skills breakdown point, and you cannot follow skills instructions or figure out what to do. Lastly, emotion myths or mistaken beliefs about emotions get in the way of the ability to regulate emotions. This is Chapter 8 of the Scouting Sessions YouTube video series. I hope you got something constructive out of it. And if you did, feel free to leave it in the comment section. Thank you for watching this video. Like, share, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.